So let's look at what are we going to do today. We'll look at what is big data. We'll understand uh, what are the limitations of the existing solutions. Why do we need something like Hadoop? Okay, we'll al also understand how does Hadoop uh, solve the problem. Then we will be uh, <coughs> we'll be looking at uh, we'll we'll be introducing you to Hadoop. Uh, we'll look at the various components of the Hadoop ecosystem. Uh, we'll also look at the core components of Hadoop, which is HDFS and MapReduce. We'll go into details of HDFS architecture. We will also understand uh, how does a MapReduce job execution work. We'll understand terms like rack awareness. We'll also understand how does a file read and write happen in Hadoop. And then we'll also take a sneak peek on the Hadoop 2.0 uh, architecture. Okay. Okay, so what is big data? Now, I'm sure everyone has heard about big data. Everyone has done their own research on big data till now. And uh, they know uh, what is referred as big data. But let me also tell you uh, what big data is according to me. Now, not very different than what you've thought. It, it's lots and lots of data. That's, what it's called. That's why it's called big. Now, it, it is not in uh, megabytes or gigabytes when the data reaches terabytes and petabytes. And if the data is really large and complex in the sense that it is not uh, not just structured data, a lot of unstructured and semi-structured data is called big data. And there are, there are a few definitions associated with big data where they say that, okay, big data, when you have large amount of data flowing in your system, okay, at a big speed and a big variety of data, data like big streams uh, from, <clears throat> if you click on something on say a, a like or a share on Facebook that, that contributes to big data. Large amount of uh, videos, audios which are shared is called, is, is big data. The amount of data which is, uh, the kind of data which is uh, shared in say, uh, uh, I mean the amount of data, the customer data which you get, the kind of customer behavior data which you get in large organizations, that is, that contributes to big data. Why are people so crazy about big data these days? What, what does big data help in? So yes, so this is, this is basically the motivation about, the everyone had a lot of data, it's not that data has come today, uh, but there was not many ways of analyzing that data. Okay, so with, with uh, tools like Hadoop coming in, it has become much more easier to analyze that data. Okay, and you can do predictive analysis, you can do trend anal analysis, you can look at customer behavior, you can, you can run uh, specific campaigns for customers, you can, you can do uh, uh, say a fraud analysis using big data. So a lot of, lot of, uh, lot of domains are finding applications there. It's, it's the, all started with social media, but now, I mean, right from banks to retail, we'll, we'll be looking at some examples to government. Everywhere uh, people have started realizing the power of big data analytics, and uh, we are, they are doing uh, analytics there. So uh, now there is an example here which says uh, New York Stock Exchange uh, generates about one terabyte of new trade data per day to perform stock trading analytics to determine trends on optimal trades. Now if you look at one terabyte of new trade data per day and no trade analysis is done based on a single day data, right? Uh, it is done based on a data over years or months. So you can imagine the kind of data you have to crunch and you need to have all that data in single place and there has to be a tool which can actually crunch such huge amount of data. Okay, uh, we will be looking at, uh, so, uh, so that is, that, that's the amount of data we are talking about. Now there are various applications, uh, there are various places where you will find this data. Mostly the data which we deal with when we talk about uh, big data is unstructured data. Okay. So in this section, we'll be looking at some of the big data customer scenarios. We'll be looking at where, what are the use cases where uh, people are using big data analytics. Okay, so eBay, for example, is using a lot of it in web and e-tailing, which uh, on eBay, if you've gone there, you'll see a lot of recommendation engines which will say that, okay, the people who bought this also bought this, right? You've seen that, something like that, everyone? Has everyone seen that? If you try to check out something from either eBay or a Flipkart, it will say, okay, people who bought this also bought this. So that recommendation engine is done using big data analytics. In fact, Mahout is the tool which is used on uh, for doing that, the building recommender systems. Okay, I'll, I'll talk about Mahout as well, so don't, don't worry about that. 
then ad targeting i've already spoken to you about ad targeting where on a cus cus uh, specific customer you can target your ad based on his behavior so that's that's one place where people use big data a lot uh, improving uh, the search quality and fraud click fraud detection so for example if you have ad on google and there is someone who keeps on clicking that ad once on a, every time uh, using a bot for example google has to make sure that uh, that uh, that ad is not charged for okay so even if you go and click a single ad 100 times on google it is not that the advertiser will be charged for that okay so that's that's also done using big data analytics by looking at what, who is actually doing that okay by then uh, in telecommunications there is a china mobile which is a large uh, i mean airtel also uses that a lot of lot of indian mobile companies also use it in fact a lot of uh, companies in the us uh, also use uh, hadoop right now so for network performance optimization calling data record analysis uh, all this call data for example is unstructured data right? it's audio data so if you have to do some analysis over that uh, if you have to look at okay and if you have to look at the performance of your value added services schemes so you you have to analyze huge amount of data how many people actually got and used that particular top up plan which you gave and what was the churn from there so that is that is the kind of uh, thing which uh, that is the kind of uh, that is the kind of analysis which we uh, do using uh, hadoop here <coughs> or big data analytics okay and you also analyze your network to predict failures okay. so we want to know more of uh, our customers so basically we want to know the customer behavior the customer uh, uh, the uh, the kind of uh, the say for example if i know these many customers actually uh, you these many customers use this kind of schemes okay so what i'll do is that i'll probably introduce the scheme where these customers will be uh, say for an example let's take a example now i have a segment of you young customers who use a lot of phone in night okay but they are looking at competitors which are giving them free night talk time okay so that will lead to customer churn for me if i am not if i have not got that data analysis properly okay and uh, uh, and if if i have got that data analysis properly i'll be able to prevent that customer churn uh, by introducing a scheme like that does that answer your question vivek so customer churn prevention is understanding your customer behavior and introducing specific schemes for our customers or a set of customers so that they do not go to competitors okay so these are all the places where in telecom uh, big data analytics is used okay now uh, you have understood the application of uh, uh, big data analytics in retail you have understood the application of big data analytics in telecommunication okay so let's see what are the other use cases now in banks and uh, financial services jp morgan chase for example uh, one of the largest banks in fact uh, uh, all the top 5 banks use hadoop okay in fact top 3 of the the top uh, the three of the top five banks use uh, hadoop to, uh, use the cloud era hadoop itself okay so what are the kind of things which they use for hadoop for basically for modeling true risk what what that means is that you have to uh, you have to look at okay with with a particular loan or with a particular uh, transactions what could be the risk associated with it say for example a lot of uh, insurance companies actually use uh, big data analytics what do they do with it is that looking at your past records in terms of payments and looking at your health records they'll predict okay this should be the premium you should pay and uh, the, based on your region where you live the kind of salary you earn your premiums will vary and the kind of schemes they can offer you will vary okay so these these are the applications in the financial services domain okay now uh, retail coming to retail we will also be looking at sears uh, Uh, the sears sears has a very interesting use case i'll be going into some detail there now point of sales transaction analysis again customer churn analysis or sentiment analysis uh, what does this mean okay so when you go to a retail store if you go to a retail store and if i know that you had visited me say 3 uh, months back and you bought something from me 
and at this point of time i can give you a associated discount on a particular thing i can and okay just hold on prem i'll explain that okay and i can uh, uh, so i can if say i am i am the person who is selling you i am the uh, cashier there okay you came to me and i told you hey do you know you have a discount on black shoes uh, because you bought uh, say a black suit a few uh, weeks back and we have a running discount on black shoes black leather shoes if i knew this data about this particular customer and if i know okay this customer is most likely to buy something like this if i give him a discount or say for example a customer who is very high on electronics whenever a new thing comes in he comes and buys it and today he has just come to buy something else uh, if i give him a discount on that that's something which will really help me in selling more so that kind of analysis a lot of retail stores do now okay so prem says i was working with doyesh bank on credit analysis but we are not using hadoop now see uh, it is not that it is not just that you, know, you will be uh, all the time you will be using hadoop when the data becomes huge and you really want to i'll, I'll show you an example and you will understand where hadoop will come into place instead of other uh, let, let me let me just go to the next point <coughs> okay okay so this is case study on sears holdings sears uh, is a retail store okay a mid size retail store now what they did they what they were doing earlier was that they were using a combination of teradata exadata and sas to do data mining okay uh, they were using a traditional system like exadata teradata and to store and process customer activity and sales data and they wanted to understand how do their customers behave okay now they were not using hadoop earlier what were the uh, what did they want to do what did they want to come up uh, from there the same thing which i showed you just now in the, point of sales okay uh that <coughs> they wanted to understand how are their customers buying what are their buying patterns okay what are their uh, what could be when do the customers buy what are the kind of things they are buying what could be the associated things they can buy if a particular customer is buying something so that they can offer them deals and discounts as well as uh, they can map their behavior properly okay so so earlier they were using system uh, uh, teradata exadata combination along with sas now there were some issues which they were facing because of the which they shifted to hadoop let's see what was the challenge there so you can also read at this link why sears is all going all on hadoop so this is one link which you can find in this ppt this ppt will be available in your lms so you will be able to look at this link as well now what was the challenge so basically you this is the place where you collect the data from the instrumentation your uh, point of sale instrument you collect and you store it uh, store the data on a grid okay so it will be a huge data which will be stored initially what happens is that 90% of their data was getting archived so after a period of time this data becomes too used to handle in this storage grid and they were archiving this data i'm sure a lot of you have actually seen uh a uh, lot of it's just another just hold on uh uh just hold on for some time it you'll you'll get to know what is uh, uh what th this is what I, i'm explaining you right okay okay so the 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 storage here is a grid of computers where you're storing your data okay this is not hadoop usually the usual your storage area network kind of thing and what you will be doing on this will be that after some time you will archive you will be archiving some data okay at any point of time the active data which is available for processing is around 10% of the data and 90% of the data is archived okay so you have limited availability of data to analyze say for example a customer came 3 months back uh, you will not be able to look at that data archiving refers to Uh, putting that uh, some data from a active level one storage to a level two storage, like a tape or uh, uh, to a level two storage, which is not actively, which can, which is not actively uh, uh, used for analysis. Okay. So you in your offices you would have seen that uh, there will be a tier one storage, there will be a tier two storage, then there will be everything will be stored on a tape going forward. 
and you are you look at the archive data when only when there is a problem or something goes wrong you pull that data back to do that but then uh, the challenge there is that if you cannot store such huge amount of data in an active tier 1 system and that is why you could analyze only 10% of that data now if you analyze only 10% of that data uh, because the challenge here was that if you move it to a etl compute grid you you will not be able to do that because of the uh, because of the limitations there now this data goes into rdbms then you run your bia interactive apps to get a uh, to get an, an okay to get a uh, <coughs> to uh, basically to get an insight on the customer behavior okay so let me let me repeat this once again what is happening here here is your instrumentation in data collection this data is getting stored into a uh, into a storage network then a lot of this data gets uh, this is all raw data a lot of this data gets uh, archived over a period of time this data is moved into a etl thing where where you do a uh, extract transaction load everyone understands what is etl okay so etl will be used on this raw data okay so we will be uh, reading this raw data we will be extracting meaningful information out of that data okay we will be and then we will be generating uh, reports out of that based on the business requirements okay so th there will be some sql querying that done there we will be looking at more into etl as we go into this course but for now you can understand it this way that it will be uh, you move the data into a data warehouse okay where you will be analyzing this uh, uh, raw data you will be reading this raw data and you will extract refined data from this raw data okay and then move it into and and generate reports based on that okay so the challenge here is that only 10% of the data is available at any point of time to generate uh, interactive reports which can give you insights into the customer behavior okay so that's what sears was also seeing and what they did was something like this so they removed this complete etl and uh, uh, the storage grid with Hadoop. Okay, now this complete data is available at any point of time to do analytics. Okay, you don't have to archive any data. It's you can actually uh, put all the data together and do all the analysis together. Okay, okay. So the challenge, the challenge which companies face is not about storing that data. The challenge is about retrieving that data at a very fast rate and putting into a ETL kind of system. Okay. Now, what happens is that uh, you, the storage sizes have have gone up. They have scaled up beautifully. What has not happened is that the uh, read speed from a storage is not has, is not increased. The read still happens at a very low speed. Okay, we will be looking at that in a while. So, because of that, it is impossible to read all that huge data without using something like Hadoop. And I'll be telling you why. Okay, in a while. So, just hold on. Some of these things will become clearer as we move on. For now, you can just understand that with Hadoop, you are now able to utilize your complete raw data for analytics as compared to earlier system where you were using only 10% of that data. Okay. So the performance of getting data and everything we'll be talking about in a while. Okay. You'll uh, you'll understand all those things. Okay. Is that okay? Is everyone fine with that? So, see the crux which you need to understand here is that because of the limitation of not being able to get that data from a, uh, from a ETL, uh, from a storage grid, okay, uh, we had to archive a lot of data and you could use only some data, okay. Now, Hadoop has solved that problem and you have the complete data available for analysis. How is it different from the storage grid is something which we will be looking at in a while, okay. We'll be also looking at security in uh, Hadoop, not in this class, but later on, Satish. Okay. So is that clear to everyone, guys? How is how has Hadoop changed the fact that you can now analyze a larger amount of data as compared to a lo lesser data earlier? 